Today we will be learning to draw this sun in Adobe Illustrator CS6 and in the course of doing that we will learn a lot about how the rotate tool works. So let's get started. First thing uh, you should always do when opening up a new document is show your rulers and for this project we're going to want to show our grid. I have set my rulers to picas which is typographic measurement and you can change the measurement increments of your ruler by right-clicking in it and then choosing the measurement system that you want to use. The very first thing I'm going to do is draw a circle to form the center of my sun. I'm going to get down here, get on my grid line here, and I'm going to hold down my Option key and my Shift key so that my circle will come out from the center and will be a perfect circle. I'm just going to let this uh, be about six picas, six picas two here. doesn't have to be exact. Going to my layers palette, I want to make a copy of this circle I've just drawn. So I'm going to go and just say duplicate layer one here. So I have layer one here, which I'll just rename circle and then I'm going to hide it. And I'm going to rename this one rays. So now I have uh, two, um, two copies of this circle and I've hidden that circle so I'm going to work in rays. Next I want to draw my first ray. So I'm going to go to my polygon tool. I'm going to click and start drawing and as I draw I'm going to hit my down arrow key until I come up with a triangle. And I'm just going to hold down my shift key to level that and draw a triangle. It doesn't really matter what size because we're going to resize it. Now you can see my smart guides. I have my smart guides turned on, and where you do that is right here. So I get a little indication when I have these two aligned. And I'm going to make this tall. I don't know, maybe around uh, oh, 18 picas, something like that. And I want to make it quite a bit narrower. So um, I've selected it with my selection tool here. I've got my bounding box. I'm going to hold my option key so it will scale from the center. And I'm going to squeeze it in. I can see in my little guides here that maybe um, a little more than two picas. Two picas 11 seems okay. So I'll uh, scale it to that. Now, next, what I want to do. Let me zero in on this a little so you can see what's going on. What I want to do is I'm going to rotate this ray around the center of the circle, but I don't want the bottom of my ray to have this flat look. I want it to curve, the same kind of curve as the circle here. And um, there are a lot of ways this could be done. It could be done with a pen tool, but we haven't covered the pen tool yet, and so I'm going to show you how to do it without the pen tool. I'm just hitting my down arrow key to get these two shapes to intersect. So I know they're intersecting. I'm going to select them both with my selection tool. And then I'm going to use the wonderful new Shape Builder tool, which I think appeared in Illustrator 5. So CS5. So if you have an earlier version, you won't have this tool. And um, the way the Shape Builder tool works is that if I have two selected shapes and I drag, I'll get a combination of those shapes. So that's not what I want in this case. What I actually want to do is delete this little area here so that this ray has a curved bottom. And the way to get the Shape Builder tool to delete is I hold down the Option key and notice that that little plus becomes a minus. And I'm just going to drag up until everything that I want to delete is highlighted. And bingo, I have deleted. That's great. So I'm going to go over here and turn my circle back on. You can see why I wanted to keep my circle because I deleted the duplicate circle 
uh, in order to get the shape I wanted on my ray. So I'm going to V for my selection tool, I'm getting my bounding box. I'm just going to hit my up arrow key a few times until my um, ray is separated from a circle. Let's get rid of the fill on this so I can see the center. Now I'm going to select my ray and go to the rotate tool, which is right here. Now you'll notice that uh, when I choose the rotate tool, that a little rotation of point uh, appears here in the center. And if I just grab the tip of my ray and start dragging, here's what happens. It rotates around its own center, which is not at all what I want. Command Z to undo that. I want it to rotate around the center of the circle. So what I need to do is put my cursor right in the perfect center of the circle, and this has to be exact. Hold down my Option key and click. Now I need to check uh, to choose uh, a rotation amount that will divide evenly into 360. So I'm going to choose 30, and then I'm going to hit Copy. Make sure you don't hit OK. Hit Copy. That looks good to me. So I can go to Object Transform. Trans oops, excuse me. Object Transform. Transform again. And I get another copy. But you'll notice that under Object Transform, there is a keyboard command, Command D. So that is much easier. So I just hold down my Command D. D, D, D. That looks great. Very good. Now I'm going to go back to my layers palette and I'm just going to hide my circle again to get it out of my way. So Command Zero to fit in window. I'm going to select all these and go to my fill box up here and just choose the standard orange yellow gradient that ships with Illustrator. And let me get rid of that ugly blackout. So this looks pretty good, but uh, it's got kind of a nice sun color. But it's really not exactly what I want because a sun is circular or radial, and I want to get a feeling of radiation here. So um, I'm going to go to my gradient palette over here in my gradient panel in my tool panels. And notice the type of gradient here is linear. I'm going to change that to radial. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. It's not quite what I want, but it's, it's getting there. Over here in my tool panel, I have a gradient tool, or I can just hit G to take me there. And you'll notice that what the gradient tool is showing me is that I have a separate center for each one of these gradients. And that's not really what I want. I want this gradient to come out central from the sun itself. So what I'm going to do with my gradient tool is click in the center of my circle and just drag straight down. Better. Now you can see that I've just got one center and that all of my gradients are displaying as one. But I really would prefer to have the yellow out here rather than in the center. So in my gradient panel here, there is a handy little button called Reverse Gradient. I click on that, that's much closer to what I want. I don't think I need all these extra sliders. I can get rid of them just by grabbing them. And I can just move this back and forth until I like the way it looks. You can, you don't have to make yours look like mine. You can do it however you like. I think that looks okay. So I'm just going to go with that. I'm going to go back to my selection tool. You can see my bounding box now encompasses all of these. I'm going to go to object group. Now, if I click on one of these, all of them will um will be selected and i can't lose any of them now what i want to do is create a smaller uh, set of rays that are going to display in between these larger rays so i need to scale my rays down and for this i'm going to the scale tool so i'm going to click in the center to set the point from which it will scale and um, hold down my option key and click in the center um, I think 80% is fine. 
and I'll leave scale stroke and effects on. And I'm just going to click copy. Now I have a second copy and I'm, let's make it a yellow fill so we can kind of see what's going on here. So I'm going to choose my rotate tool. Once again, hold down my option key and click on the exact center. And I want 15 degrees now. And I'm just going to click OK. Ah, just exactly what I wanted. So I only have a few things left here to do. Um, I am going to, I want my outside rays to get a kind of a more shimmery look here. So I'm going to use an effect. Distort and transform, roughen. And uh, I'm going to choose preview here. And I think I want smooth points. And I can just drag the sliders back and forth until I like the way it looks. And there's a lot of different looks you could get here. You just have to find. A look that you like. That looks okay to me, so I'm going to click OK. Incidentally, effects are live effects. If I go to the outline view, you'll see that my original rays are untouched, and I could actually remove this effect and try something else if I if I didn't like it at a later date. So let's go back here. And go to my um, layers palette and turn my central circle back on. And I'm going to click here to deselect, and I'm going to use this little target circle in my layers palette to target that central circle. And then I can just go up here and pick a nice color for it. How about this nice bright red? And there I have my sun. If I want to put a background on it, I'm going to go down here into my tools panel. I'm going to choose draw behind mode so that if I draw a background rectangle, which I'm about to do, it will draw behind. Oh, before I do that, let's, uh, let's pick a gradient. I think I made one up earlier, so I'm going to just use that. So back to my rectangle tool, click and drag. I'm in draw behind mode, so it should go behind. Perfect, except for I really wanted it to display vertically. So if I go to my rotate tool here, I mean my gradient tool, I should be able to get that to display more the way I want. Now I'm going to turn my grid off. I don't need it anymore. And there's my son. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll try to come back next week uh, with another tutorial.